guys, welcome back. So today we're going to upgrade our workshop. So in previous episodes we made our original workshop running on the generator, then we upgraded the power system to the water mill setup, and now we're going to use the water mill setup, which should have 20 to 25 water mills in it, to create our new workshop. In our new workshop we're going to upgrade our macerator into a rotary macerator, our extractor into a centrifuge extractor, and that will actually take time, we'll get into why that is and our compressor into a singularity compressor. So let's get going. We're going to connect to our world. And just a quick review. So this is the power system we made. I've got 25 of my water mills in here. And this is routed up into our workshop. So uh, you do need a a bit of material. You should also have the prototype Omni Wrench if you're going to do this. So I'm going to change some stuff here. So this is all stuff from last episode. And what we need is we're going to want more fiberglass cable. Or if you don't want to make fiberglass cable, you can make uh, gold cable, insulated gold cable, maybe even doubly insulated gold cable because our workshop is still going to be compact because I like compact workshops. So I'm going to recommend the Omni Wrench. Uh, it does take two diamond and the stupid cyan wool block. If you don't know how to make cyan wool, it's really not that bad. You get a normal, you get any color wool. Just kill a sheep, shear a sheep, whatever. Get a piece of wool and keep mixing it with your medium stone until you get the right color wool so not a big deal there. Uh, your other options is the regular wrench. I would not recommend picking your shop up with it on the off chance that you destroy an item. So your alternative is the electric wrench which is feeds your wrench with an electronic circuit and a battery. Charge it in here so you make your empty wrench, put it in your bat box, it starts charging bring it all the way up to full juice. Uh, you need to have this button bound, so look for your mode switch key. I have Q set. Hold down Q, right click, enable lossless wrench mode, and I'm just going to quick fix this floor. So lossless wrench mode, right click to pick up. Bam. Now notice that this does use up most of your wrench's juice. It uses up 10,000, so you must recharge the wrench and extract more. Alternatively, if you use the Omni Wrench, just one Omni Wrench. The Omni Wrench has unlimited uses, so don't worry about breaking it. Just uh, oh, this is the wrong wrench. So Omni Wrench, one Omni Wrench. Right click, and you might have to double right click. That's fine. So pick up your machines pick up this generator, you don't need it anymore. Uh, honestly, you should have used that generator when you made the water mill setup. So I'm just going to destroy it. Uh, pick up your copper cable and save it, you'll want it forever. And your bat box is going to go. We love our bat box, but we don't need it anymore. So The first thing we're going to do is we need a better storage system than our bat box. We have a lot of power now. We need some place to keep it all. So you have to make an MFE. And this is expensive, but worth it. So you need these 2x insulated gold cable, which is just a gold cable and two rubber, or you can do it one rubber at a time and make the insulated cable first and then the double insulated cable. Doesn't matter how you do it. Energy crystal, this is expensive. Diamond surrounded by eight redstone and a machine block, just eight refined iron in a circle. So not too, too bad. Does require the diamond, though. So we make this device. We plop it down. Bam. It faces the wrong way. We use our Omni Wrench to switch it. And we're happy. So now we've got this. Uh, how do I want to break this up? This is fine. So now we want to make our upgraded machines, and I want more space than this, so I'm going to put in the backbone, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to save this spot on the right left here for a charging bench. And we're going to put down cabling around these walls. So uh, we're just going to keep going out over this way. So how much do I need? I'm going to have one machine, two machine, one machine, one machine, two machine, two machine. Okay, good. So this is enough cable. Uh, notice that this cable is less than 40 units long, so we will not lose any power doing it. Also, notice that it does not matter. This bat bot, this MFE, puts out 128 EU per tick. So we're not going to lose so much power that we can't run our machines. Now our next thing is we're going to upgrade our macerator. So we want the rotary macerator. And so that's really simple to make. You take your refined iron. Oh god, I'm going to need a machine. So first you have to make this advanced machine block. And this is actually a little more difficult to make. So we need a carbon plate. And this is something you need to make beforehand. So we need a compressor to do this. And I don't think we had a compressor in our original workshop because this is strictly for upgrading. So first we have to make this compressor block. So that's stone. You make stone in the furnace, obviously, by cooking it over coal. And the machine block and electronic circuit we should be familiar with. So put down... Oh, God. So a slight issue here. Namely, you cannot do what I just did there, because that's stupid. So now we're going to put this compressor down again with low voltage, and we're not going to blow it up. So first thing is we need coal, and only coal will work. You've been saving up this whole game for me because I've been telling you use charcoal not coal for this reason you put your coal into the silly macerator I'm not gonna wait so I did just make an episode on this which is you can add overclockers to machines to make them run faster at the expense of more EU so you macerate coal to make coal dust and that was the whole purpose of this demonstration so now we're going to assume we've got all of this coal dust, and we're just going to make, I need to be in not creative mode, we're going to make coal balls with it. So we take it, we make this 4x4 pattern, we make raw carbon fiber, we make all of the raw carbon fiber, we take this, we make two of these. So see how I took 64 coal and made 8 raw carbon meshes out of it, then you put this in here. It compresses. Again, I'm lazy. We're going to add the overclocker to it. And it's going to speed up at the cost of more EU. So that makes this carbon plate. And carbon plate step one. So I'm going to get myself another one since I need two of them. Our other thing is we need this advanced alloy ingot. So we need a mixed metal ingot. And that's three refined iron, three bronze, and three tin on top of each other in a, bron in a crafting table. So I'm going to give myself two of these. Same thing. You can press them. We speed it up a little bit. And the whole reason we're upgrading our machine shop is so that we don't need to make all of these overclockers. Because these are 10k coolant cells, which aren't too bad to make but it does require more energy and it is less efficient. So why didn't you finish? There we go. You're just bugging. So now we've got our two carbon plate, our two thingies, and that's how you make this advanced alloy and this carbon plate. So now we're going to look at the rotary macerator again. The advanced machine block, we now have the tools to make that. We make it. We combine it to make our rotary macerator. Bam. And I suggest making two of them. I like to have two of them because it really speeds up the workshop. So 
So we go back into creative mode, break the floor, and one, two, leave a gap right here. Trust me on this. And I need my, oh god. So last time I blew up the machine and that was because I did not put down a low voltage transformer. So this is an LV transformer. It steps down your power from medium voltage to high voltage. The MFE outputs high voltage. Our machines take low voltage. Your options are to either put transformer upgrades into all of your machines or to make a low voltage transformer. Making a low voltage transformer is a lot cheaper, so we're going to do that for now. Uh, in the future, we will actually upgrade all of our machines, though. And I will have an episode on that because there's a time when I like to do that. So we make this low voltage transformer. It's nice and cheap. We take it. We look at it. We put it down so that the red end faces where the current comes in. So medium voltage comes into the red, high voltage comes out of the green. And on yours, it's a, if you're using the default texture pack, it's actually even easier. This has three prongs on it to represent higher voltage. This has one prong on it to represent lower voltage. Now, we need that MFE we made earlier to store power in. We put it down. We look at it, we get out our Omni wrench. and we rotate it so that it faces the right way. So now we have power going the correct direction. Uh, we don't need to worry about this. So these both have power. Now these are fun machines, so what we need are levers. And I like to hide my levers. I don't like them to be visible. So these machines turn on when they have red current passing through them. So I'm just going to stick these on the walls here. And I'm going to set all f six of these levers to ARN. And notice how you hear noises coming out of them. Uh, what's wrong here? I missed. That's what's wrong here. Bam, bam. Ow. No, I was right. The machine goes here. It goes right on top of that, right? The machine will be there. Okay, yeah, so I have them in the right spot. Bam, bam. So now we're satisfied with that. Uh, we're just going to put the floor back. And so notice these machines are on even though they're not doing anything. There's no objects in them, they're just powering up. So this is RPM. Uh, the machines we're going to make right now all have this effect on them. So this RPM will wind up. When they're at full RPM, they process really, really quickly. And the higher the RPM, the more quickly they process. So if you leave them on like this, they'll always be a full RPM ready to go. Otherwise they take a little while to warm up. So we're going to keep adding machines. Now we can make the singularity compressor and that's this. So this is Obsidian. This is another advanced machine block. You're going to need a lot of those so just make like six of them. And this is the compressor we made earlier. So you need Obsidian and there are a couple ways to get Obsidian. You can either pour water onto source lava blocks and mine them up with a diamond tool, or my preferred way is take two wood, fuse it with the minium stone, make obsidian. A lot easier. And as you can realize, I love the minium stone. So you make this singularity compressor, and a lot of players don't actually bother making this compressor because you need this obsidian, which is just a pain to mine. And I say why not? It's easy, it's cheap, it's fast. Um, so, well, their argument is that it's not cheap. So we make this silly device anyways. Singularity compressor. Bam! We pretend I used my old one to make it. We put it down. I'm going to put it right here. It's on, it starts generating PSI pounds per square inch. So, bam, 
electric furnace. Uh, next we're going to make the induction furnace. So the induction furnace is right here. Uh, just your old electric furnace surrounded by copper with some advanced machine block in there. So I'm going to make two of those. I It's not as necessary you make two of these. And these do use up a lot of power when they are working. So right now, as it heats up, it doesn't use a lot of power. Once you put things in there and start cooking them, they each use 16 EU per tick. So that's going to be a huge drain on your power system. But once this thing is at full power, it doesn't really matter. So notice that we're st still generating positive power here, net gain. Uh, eventually, this will cap out at 600,000. That's the hope of this entire setup that you hit that 600,000 and then any operations you perform never exceeds that buffer. So our last machine is called the centrifuge extractor and this is actually harder to make. So this requires electrolyzed water and it requires seven of them. And the only way to make electrolyzed water is with an electrolyzer. So this is an electrolyzer uh, it's not that hard to make. Just some copper cable circuit block and these empty cells which are made from tin. You get a lot of them. So we make the electrolyzer and the way the electrolyzer works is you don't plug power into it, you put it next to an MFE or MFSU which is why we left this gap here so that it could be next to it. So unfortunately my MFE cannot get power. Uh, the way the electrolyzer works is it stores power. So I'm going to pretend I have a whole bunch of those uh, cells left over. What are they called? Empty cell. So let's pretend I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left over. And I'm going to go out. I'm going to fill these with water. sky is falling. So here is the closest renewable water. So, and notice how they just kind of transfer over like that. So I only need seven of them. We go back in and what this does is the electrolyzer kind of acts as another store energy storage system. So when the MFE is above, I want to say, 60% power. It transfers energy from a water cell to an electrolyzed water cell. So I'm just going to speed this up and watch this get to full power. Okay, so now we're above that kind of critical limit here. So we're above the 430 mark, which is enough power to start electrolyzing water. So as you can see, it's progressing forward, and it's very, very slow. But what this does is it's converting water cells into electrolyzed water cells. However, it does work backwards, and if you drop below a certain power, it can take energy out of the electrolyzed water cells and send it back into the MFE. So this is a, an interesting storage idea. I'm not too fond of it. I'd rather there was a more direct way of generating electrolyzed water cells. But as you can see, this is a very slow process. So um, a lot of players will just completely forego this and make a regular and just upgrade their regular extractor to work really quickly. But I say if you have nothing better to do build the electrolyzer, shove it next to your MFE, fill it with water cells, and go to town. Electrolyzed water shields are used in force field cores and force field upgrades and the centrifuge. And that's it. So they don't have a lot of use besides as power storage devices. So we'll just look at this, be like, ooh, yay, there it is. And I'm just going to give myself this already while we wait. And there it is. So we have made an electrolyzed water cell. And you can tell it's working because the front of it's green.
So now we put down this guy, he starts charging up. And this is fantastic because it can you can put a whole stack of rubber in here and or what is it called sticky resin in here and it won't fill up unlike with the other silly thing so you'll get out all of your rubber all at once and you don't have to stop by every 10 seconds and fix it and by 10 seconds I mean like a minute because it's so slow so these guys are almost fully heated and then we'll just quick go through and show you what to do with them I'm not sure why this is powering up so slowly. Oh, because this is what I just put down. I was thinking it was this. Okay, so this is normal. And we'll look at this. Still gaining net power, albeit barely. So that is the point of the system though, to show you that even if you aren't running at full capacity, you can still do it. So with this setup, if your server lets you, you might want to just add more water mills or solar panels and ultimately solar arrays. So these induction furnaces I am a little worried about, but I want this system to get up to speed. So I don't know what the maximum speed on the centrifuge extractor is, but now let's let's show you what the real benefit of the system is. So you come back up from the great ether, you have a whole bunch of iron ore, and you say to yourself, I want to macerate this before next week. So you take your rotary macerator and you shove it in here, and lo and behold, look at how quickly it goes. Now let's say, oh, I also want to make a whole bunch of just refined iron right away. You can put in here certain modifiers and I don't know what they all are. I do know charcoal's one. And if you put charcoal in with iron, you make refined iron dust instead of regular iron dust. And notice that I'm not actually using my charcoal. I did not anticipate that. But Oh, what just happened? I just picked that up. Okay. So I do not want to have my Omnir selected. Obviously, you can have two output here, so it will process the entire stack. You don't have to come back and check it. And remember that one time we compressed stuff and it took forever? Well, what do I want? I want some kind of cold lump. I don't know what it's called. Uh, raw fiber so carbon mesh so we want a carbon mesh we're just going to give myself a whole bunch of these because why not we shove them in there and look at how quickly they go so these machines are orders of magnitude faster than the old machines and that didn't use up any charcoal I am impressed by that I didn't know that so it there's that. Now we can take this, we can put them in here, and actually I'm going to show it this way. So you can make, actually do two different things in here at once and it will output both of them. And same here. And again, order of magnitude faster, you can also induction furnace two things at once. And then last but not least, we've got our sticky resin. So we shove our sticky resin into here. This isn't up to full speed yet, but again order of magnitude faster so this is what we've been working to this whole silly game notice that we are still electrolyzing water because we are above the point uh, actually we might have stopped now so because the induction furnaces are going they are drawing a lot of power and so as you can see we are using it up but if you recall right before we started processing all this stuff we had over 430,000, I think we were in the 440 range maybe, 450. So it cost 20,000 or 30,000 EU to do all of this. And now we're still running the machines, but as you can see we're gaining power now that the uh, induction furnace has stopped. And it's a little hard to see, but you can see this is a 7 and now it's alternating 8-7 instead of 6-7, so we are seeing a net gain here. 
And what that means is that as long as you're not running these furnaces, these guys can run on their own. Because these guys have the same maintenance speed as they do operational speed, whereas these induction furnaces have a much higher operational speed than maintenance speed. So they're easy to keep warmed up, not so easy to keep uh, running, uh, processing things. So the last thing we want, and we don't need it, is a charging bench. So there are three kinds of charging bench. You've got your LV, MV, and HV. And I would make the MV charging bench just because you need the MFE in it. I think they've changed these recipes. So you make your 2x insulated cable, your wood, your circuit, your MFE, and you put it down. And this is cute because, oh, this switched off, so now it'll actually start reversing, I think. And this is just drawing a lot of power from the MFE because it is connected directly to the MFE. I don't think it actually pulls power through the cable. Could be wrong about that. And so it's filling up its internal battery, which is identical to the MFE. So we actually will see the MFE run out of power while we do this. And that will be annoying because these machines will start toggling on and off. But that's a one-time problem. And it's not really necessary to have this bench. Anything you can charge in the bench, you can charge in the MFE. And the MFE will charge it faster than the bench. The only catch is that you can charge a whole bunch of items in the bench at once. Um, I think you can add upgrades to it, so I think that's what these spots are for. Like, I wonder if adding like an energy storage upgrade increases this number. It does, so that's cute. And I bet the overclocker increases how fast it can dispense energy, because I'm unimpressed with the energy dispensing rate of this thing, but I bet if you overclock it and whatnot, it would be a lot more powerful. And so this is great if you want to um, charge a whole lot of items at once. It's not something you come across too often, but if you have like a full suit of nano armor and all of your tools and you come back and you're like, I need to fix everything, you throw it on the charging bench, you process your ore, you come back, you take it off, you're good to go. And that is the advanced workshop. So power is a little bit of an issue and I will explain better power options later because our next step is to automate all of this. This is a real pain and for your current ore mining technique this is fine but later we're gonna make a quarry and we're gonna automatically filter its production and process it and so that requires a lot more power and this has turned green, which means it's actually taking energy out of the electrolyzed cells and transferring it back to the MFE. If you watch this bar, it will go down. See, it's going backwards. So we may or may not run out of power. I don't know how much energy these things store. Probably not hundreds of thousands, though. So uh, it is a good idea, uh, though significantly harder to make these switches visible. So if I wanted to, I could put them up here. And that way I could just turn the machines on and off to avoid things like this. Because in about, I don't know, 20 seconds or so, this room's gonna be a pain in the ass. But it'll be a good learning experience, so we may as well show you. So these machines, and all machines, if you have insufficient power, will start to stagger when they run out. So the MFE hits zero, and then we start to notice the internal batteries of these drop, maybe. Uh, the only catch here is I don't know how TechIt prioritizes power. So we might not see this at all. What might end up happening is it might prioritize these machines first and give them power, and charge this as a secondary thing. And it does look like the rate at which this is charging has slowed down. So it is entirely possible that what we're seeing right now will not actually become a problem. So we could not 
however you use these induction furnaces. So if I put something in here, like some kind of ore, we're going to very quickly see it's going to drain its internal battery. There it goes. But notice how many operations at full power you can get out of the internal battery. So even if your system is overtaxed and completely depleted, you can still process a whole stack of ore. Just make sure that you split it in half like I did there. So that's your new workshop. It's very powerful, very handy, and it will greatly expedite everything you do. I highly recommend rushing this. Like, day one, make your house. Day two, get your workshop running. Day three, start working towards this. And that's it for this episode. In our next episode, we're going to cover high-efficiency mining and what you should be doing underground in order to get all the materials to make this and to make the next tier of machines. So, uh, your current caving method is fine to get the material to make this, but the need for diamond to make these MFEs is a little disconcerting if you're not mining properly. And that's the farm I made in previous episode. So, thank you for joining us, and good luck ticketing.